my name is Lucy and today on the Squeaks and Nibbles channel I'm going to talk to you about one of the absolute best pet amphibians that you can get and one that's surprisingly underrated for how entertaining and fun that they really are. It's White's Tree Frogs. White's Tree Frogs, named for the man who discovered them only still white rather than the colour that they are, come in a wonderful range of shades and in fact even within the individual so mine are standard sort of greeny blue pearlescent white tree frogs and they range between that sort of shiny bright sheen and a really dark brown and that that change in coloration will depend partially on how the frog is feeling partially on the temperature and things like sort of stress levels and environmental changes can impact it too you don't necessarily need to worry if your frog is a browner colour. I've in fact got three, two of them are almost always green, one is almost always brown during the day. But at night, when I go and check on them, which is when they're most active, you can't see the difference between that one and the rest of them, and they are all green frogs. Which stressed me out for a little while when I was new to white tree frogs, but I now do understand there's nothing wrong with that particular individual just a difference in colour. And things like that really make a big difference when you're looking after an amphibian for the first time, just that little bit of knowledge of what to look out for. So for example, if your frogs are green most of the time and then one of them suddenly brown for a few days and there's been no distinct changes of temperature or environment or anything like that, that's when to look for potential health problems. But in general, just like the, uh, the classic imagined chameleon colour changes, these frogs do just vary a little in colour and that's nothing to worry about. You can also get white tree frogs in a couple of funky new colour morphs. Uh, some of them have blue eyes, other of them have these white sort of snowflake patterns on their backs. There's no fundamental difference in terms of temperament, housing, size, anything else like that. It's just variations in colour. White tree frogs need an exclusively live food diet. That's things like bugs, beetles and worms. My absolute favourite is locusts, but you do want to vary the diet a little and not give them the same thing every time. Your live feeders shouldn't just come in a box, stay in a box and then be given to your frogs. What you'll need to do is also feed your live feeders. You can get some pre-prepared diets for that, but I just give them household scraps of fruits and vegetables and salads and they do just great on that and what that does is keep your feeders healthy which enables your frogs to stay healthy. One of the most fun things about white tree frogs is feeding them. They are voracious. You will never see anything like it in any of your other pets. When they see me coming with the tongs they bodily throw themselves at the glass to try and get to me. It's a really good idea if you've got them differently sized, so the males tend to be smaller and for my fairly well grown ones, the two females are significantly bigger than the male, to feed them separately with tongs and then you know exactly how much each one's getting. I do also occasionally put little pots of mealworms in there in one of the inescapable bowls, but in general, I do recommend tong feeding, not just for the entertainment value, but so that you can make sure that all of them are getting enough to eat. I keep my white tree frogs, like my dart frogs as well, in a bioactive setup. What's really important for white tree frogs is to have lots of places to hide if they want to, but also lots of high up things to perch on. So you can see here that there's lots of vertical and horizontal pieces of wood there, as well as plants, and they will sit on the wood on the backing of the tank, they'll sit on the glass at the side, or they'll balance on the leaves in, in a quite impossible feat, actually. The leaves sort of bending severely under their weight, but fortunately never snapping off. So they need opportunities to be high up and opportunities to be low. You want to have a nice big bowl like this one here, full of water that you will need to clean out every day because they will poop and pee in it. And that needs to be replaced with water that is uh, used something like Reptisafe, which just sort of neutralizes the chemicals that go into our tap water. The um, plants in the bioactive enclosure there are, are predominantly Monstera and Pothos, but there are a couple of other little sort of ferny things in there as well. And you do need to regularly top up your isopods if you've got white tree frogs, because if they see them, they will eat them. 
you will also find that you need to clean down the glass because they will pee and poop on the glass as well so it's not going to be totally self-sustaining in terms of hygiene and maintenance but it still keeps a lovely environment for them what's really important is not to over mist so i only mist my white tree frogs in the mornings i don't do it throughout the day like i do for some of my other gecko species and things like that and that's because there's the water here that gets splashed around especially during the night when they're active and you don't want the substrate to become sodden because then what you'll have to do is what I've done before where you have to take some of it out use a little sucker to get the water out of the drainage layer here so it's not too full up and then replace it with some drier substrate so great to have a humid environment for them but actually it doesn't need to be incredibly humid and you don't want the ground to be sopping wet so lots of nice fresh leaf litter and things like that will help with that too. You might have noticed that at the top of the tank there isn't a source of heat but there is a source of light and that is a UVB strip. I prefer to use the Arcadia brand and if you have a little look here you'll see that where the frogs are hanging out, I'll, I'll put a clip across the top in case you can't actually see them, but it's where the UV strip is lighting down. And I've tried moving this strip to all sorts of positions at the top of the tank. Wherever you put it, those frogs will spend at least some time during the week basking under the UV. They absolutely benefit from it. They definitely enjoy using it, but you don't need a separate source of heat if your house is relatively warm. My white tree frogs are incredibly confident and they would like to be handled. I think actually they do throw themselves regularly at me in um, what I wish was love, but it's actually just a need for food. And you can handle them, but I advise either incredibly soap free, patted dry hands, but ideally gloves. I don't ever pick mine up unless I've got rubber gloves on and that just means that they're not going to absorb any of the harmful toxins or, or chemicals that are on your skin into theirs because that is obviously one of the one of the downsides of amphibians is because of the nature of their lifestyle they're therefore not the most handleable of pets so temperament wise they actually don't mind being picked up at all I do move them around a little bit when I'm doing cleaning and not wanting them to jump out of the cage <laughs> in search of food whilst I'm doing so but I will always wear a pair of rubber gloves while I'm doing it just to keep them safe. There's no harm that they can cause to you at all, um, even if they attempt to um, eat you, as they <laughs> quite often want to do. It, it can't hurt you. But don't go along with that sort of Instagram, TikTok craze of letting them try to eat your hands. Don't let that happen deliberately, because there is a small risk that with your fingernails and the length of your fingers and things that you could actually hurt them a little bit. So generally a hands-off species but if you need to move them around things like that you just scoop them up under the belly and lift them up with a glove on your hand and they're just fine.